Welcome to the Code Maven channel. My name is Gabor Sabo. And in this video, we are going to start learning uh, Crystal programming. Okay, so what is this? Um, Crystal is a programming language. It's a relatively new programming language, uh, which is similar to the Ruby programming language. And I don't know much about Ruby. And I started to, I decided a couple of days ago to start learning uh, Crystal. And the way I'm learning is that I'll start reading the tutorials, documentation, whatever I can find. And I start preparing small um, examples for myself. Basically, I go over, uh, usually I go over or start go over uh, to go over the slides for, of other programming languages of Perl or Python or whatever I have and start uh, trying to implement the same thing, start doing the exercises. So this is what I'm going to do now, or this is what I started to do now. And now I'm going to share you share with you the, the beginning of what I've so far learned. So this is going to be sort of a tutorial of Crystal, learning with me, Crystal, uh, learning bad things uh, that are probably not the correct ones uh, from Crystal. Uh, but well, I hope that we'll, you'll enjoy it. So how is it going to work? I'm going to share you the screen. Uh, that's also funny because I've just upgraded my computer, so my video recording system is a little bit broken. Uh, and I'm using now Zoom in order to record alone a video. That's going to be interesting. Anyway, so now I'm sh uh, sharing the screen. You can see the slides. I'll put the slides, slides under the video, but you can actually go to the code mail and slides. So let me show you uh, this, how you get there. Nice picture, by the way. Uh, you go to the code-maven.com website, as you probably are already used to. If uh, you've seen our earlier videos, you find the slides here, or if, if you have the hamburger at the, on the right side and there, you go to the, the slides, and here you find, find the slides. Probably if you search for crystal programming, then you will get it, okay? Probably the, uh, the programming will be removed from there, or I don't know, but that's how you get to the slides. So uh, let's start. The slides, uh, whatever I have so far, and I have uh, like 50 slides already, as I see, and I probably won't do uh, so many uh, now in this first video. Um, so, the beginning crystal programming language, a couple of words about it. Uh, it's uh, said to be similar to Ruby, and so far, a little uh, the little I know about Ruby, um, it looks similar. Um, it's statically typed. So a couple of things that are probably different from Ruby, okay? These are a couple of nodes that I found on their website, basically. So let's go there. This is the first thing. Go to the website. It's called crystal-lang.org. There's going to be a conference. You can see that uh, it was before the 8th of July, a few uh, months earlier. Okay, so this is the website. And on the website, you can, I think you can scroll down and get all these points, actually, that I put them in shorter points. So you can see that uh, it's statically typed. Um, it, there is a, a built-in type interference, meaning that you don't have to declare the type of each variable uh, by assigning to the, to the value. Uh, it automatically declares the, the type of it. Uh, the, the types are not nil. Actually, let's go over the, 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 slide, the examples here. That's even better than just talking about this. So this is just a syntax, OK. Uh, the type system saying that uh, um, you have this function type of, and then you'll see that it's a number or something else. It can be different things, okay? Uh, the null reference thing or nil reference is a, a non nullable or null. Uh, the thing, this is problematic in languages where you don't have to declare uh, variables. For example, Python can be like this and uh, uh, I guess Ruby. Uh, so this is the problem that if you have this code that uh, assigns a value to this variable on condition, uh, but then you use it anyway, doesn't matter if the condition was met or not, then this is in these languages in, in, in Ruby, I guess, and in Python, this is syntactically correct. It's just a runtime error when the, this case is, is not uh, correct. So uh, if you run this program and the round two is bigger than zero, which is almost always, okay, then uh, this is going to be get the assignment and you will get here this will work. But in this very rare case where run two gets actually zero, uh, then uh, this is going to be a runtime exception. Uh, and uh, Crystal 
can detect these things and it's going to be a compile time error for it. So you won't, uh, so you find out these, these problems very soon, much earlier than in those other languages. So that's the null and it's very uh, useful. Macros, I don't know about macros yet here. Okay, we'll, we'll look, uh, look at them uh, later on. Uh, there is a concurrency model, so you can write in parallel. It's apparently similar to Go and Clojure, and I know a little bit of Go, so that's going to be interesting too, to see how it works. Okay, and there is a very easy, or that's what they say, uh, C bindings. So it can uh, you can easily uh, connect to C libraries, which is very useful because at the end, tons of things are written in C and uh, and then reused by all kinds of other programming languages with this binding. So it's very useful if you if it's easy to do in your programming language. So that's basically what I saw on their website. Not that I found that. Um, the other thing which is very important, and I think it's mentioned on the website, uh, is the shards. Uh, so the crystal shards are basically the third party module system, moduling system or library system or whatever you would like to call it uh, of crystal. Uh, there is a website, uh, oh, and unlike uh, Python or Perl or most of the other languages that have a central database and you upload there uh, your uh, released version, Crystal, as of currently, doesn't have this. Uh, maybe at one point they will do that. Instead of that, they install directly from GitHub. And again, maybe, I don't know if they can support GitLab or other things, I haven't checked that yet, from GitHub they can install. Uh, uh, but these uh, third party libraries, modules, whatever, are called shards. And then there is this website. Um, currently, this is the, I think the, the best way to find these shards. Uh, so it, you, can, you can search here and then it will direct you, uh, link you directly to the GitHub page of that, uh, that shard, okay? Um, as not the shards, I hope, or I guess, uh, that are used in MongoDB and other databases. It's like the pieces of a, of a crystal. Uh, so you can use that in order to configure the shard system. You basically need to have a, a configuration file called shard.yaml that you can create with uh, the shards, shards in it uh, command. And then you can fill in, uh, this is, I think, the, the default uh, that was created. And then you can add all kinds of information, the dependencies of your code. And then you can say shard, uh, I don't see it here, shard.install, and that would install all the dependencies uh, that you declare in your, your package. OK, uh, how do you get the uh, uh, crystal? Um, yeah, you first need to have crystal in order to use, use the shards. Okay, so how do you get it? Uh, there is a link on the website. Uh, there was a big link here as well at the top, I think. Uh, install, that goes to the same page uh, where you have instructions how to install it on various uh, places. So I am using Ubuntu, but before I start, before I installed it natively on my Ubuntu, I actually started with Docker and I will show you how to do that in a second. Uh, but here is the, the one for Ubuntu and I'll just go for your operating system and then find how to install it. And what I did is just ran this command. Yeah, I know it's dangerous to just to execute anything, with, especially with sudo that you download from later on, but you trust, we, we trust everything, right? So that's okay. Uh, of course, if you're more security aware than I'm, then uh, make sure that you check what's uh, being downloaded here from here. And um, that installed everything uh, that was needed so I can run Crystal on my uh, computer. But actually before I did this, I had the Docker version. So here is what I did. Um, I just ran this command. Actually what I did is I created a script, uh, just a simple file that had this command in. Uh, so obviously I have to have Docker installed. Uh, so you need to have Docker installed. And then um, there is this Docker uh, image uh, with Crystal, uh, which is called crystal lang slash crystal. And this is the command that would uh, run the Docker, the, this image. I mean, first time you download it, uh, it will automatically remove the container once it's done. It's in interactive mode, which I actually probably don't need here. Uh, this will map um, 
and the, um, make the make uh, the container have uh, the working directory. Uh, the, sl the slash opt being the working directory, and the, this is probably this, need, this is needed because I map the current local directory on my system to the slash opt inside, uh, and then I run crystal inside a computer, and whatever I pass to it, um, it's being passed there. So basically, once I did this, I created this file called crystal, and I made that executable crystal plus x uh, executable. Again, remember I'm running on Linux, so on Windows, if you'd like to use this in, in Docker, it's going to be slightly different. And then I can run things like this, dot slash crystal and examples, hello world, for example. Um, and that will uh, run this uh, program. And there's an alternative here. I don't, don't want to go into there. So let me show you how this, this work on the command line. I don't need all these files. Uh, so I can oh, work slides. Uh, crystal examples. So I have the no, I don't don't want to go into the examples. Crystal examples. Hello world. Dot cr. Okay. So this is now running Crystal, uh, the version that I installed on Ubuntu, and this is now working running the one inside Docker. It's a slightly. Uh, more, it's slightly slower the one inside Docker because it has to uh, uh, store Docker as well. But uh, if you don't want to install on your computer uh, and Crystal and you already have the Docker, then it's going to be a fine solution for you as well. And probably you can do the same uh, on Windows as well, and um, definitely on on um, on Mac OS. This will probably work the same way. Uh, so, uh, what is there in this Hello World? Uh, let me see. So this is hello world and then uh, and, and, and I got to stop this video because well, we write hello world and then we are done, right? So uh, the extension is, is generally .cr, uh, though again, uh, it's, prim it's primarily useful for the editor and all kinds of other things. And Linux doesn't really care and, and you can have, put it in any, any file, um, but it's useful to have the .cr extension. And then puts, uh, this is boots is basically put string. That's the short name of it. It comes from uh, Ruby, and this will print out this string on the, on the command line, as you could see on the standard output. Okay, uh, it printed out. It also prints a new line at the end, um, and that's it. Uh, we'll see a little bit more uh, later on, but for now, I think uh, that's a good start for a first video, and then. Um, enjoy set up everything and I'm going to uh, upload a new video soon. Uh, oh, and don't forget to follow the channel and like the video and whatever you need to do. Okay, so thank you very much and um, uh, see you next video.